Hope y'all are having a great weekend. Welcome to another episode of Murders, Mysteries, and More. My name is Kaylee. My name is Dozen. Be sure to like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell next to the subscribe button to turn on post notifications. This week we will be covering the strange disappearance of Bobby Dunbar. Before we get into this case, we always encourage those who have useful information to any unsolved case, please report it to your local police and sheriff department. We also want to mention the importance of always making sure to keep your little ones safe. Teach them to not talk to strangers and yell if they are in danger and know how to fight back. Four-year-old Bobby Dunbar and his family went to stay in a cabin August 23, 1912. The cabin was located in Suez, Louisiana. He was staying with 11 party members, which included his parents, Lessie and Percy Dunbar, and his brother Alonzo. On that same day, Percy Dunbar had to leave for work. Bobby was upset, so he broke the straw on his hat. Lessie Dunbar was preparing fried fish. Bobby said he wanted to go shooting for fish with family friend Paul Busy. Gar is a small, sweet needle fish found in the murky waters of the eastern parts of the United States. Paul had a close relationship with Bobby and took him horseback riding often. Paul's nickname for Bobby was Heavy. Bobby's mother let him go with Paul and all the other boys. The boys start to head back for lunch after fishing. Paul gave Alonzo a piggyback ride on his shoulders. He was joking around with Bobby, saying, Get out the way, Heavy, or I'll run you over. Reports state that Bobby said, You can't do it. You ain't no bigger than me. When the boys got back, his mother noticed Bobby was missing. And Lissy went together to search for her son, Bobby. At one point, she fainted on the ground. Three men went to search the wagon trail up north behind the camp. They thought Bobby went that way to get to his dad. The men bumped into his father, Percy. Percy panicked. He ran to camp to look for his son. Search and rescue teams spent all night looking for any signs of Bobby. They even blasted dynamite in the lake. They also used thick, long hooks to scrape the bottom of the lake to find any signs of Bobby. That evening, divers went to search around coves where the hooks could not reach. Unfortunately, the only body they found was a deer. When rescue teams were unable to locate his body, they theorized an animal got to him. The most probable animal would have been an alligator due to their heavy presence in the swamps of Louisiana. Searchers even sliced open alligators to see if there was any remains of a boy inside. However, they did not find anything. Saturday, August 24th, about 500 men were sent out to look for this little boy. They even took a hat similar to Bobby's and broke the straw and saw how long it could float on the lake. The result showed that the hat could float for hours and there should have been some evidence of Bobby's hat if he drowned in the lake or was eaten by animals. It is very difficult for any parent to lose a child. This caused severe distress to Leslie. Family returned home to Opelousas. Louisiana. Paul, Mizzy, and a couple other guests stayed behind to keep searching for Bobby. They found little footprints heading towards a railroad bridge outside of the swamp. No body or evidence was found. People started to wonder if Bobby was kidnapped. One theory was someone with a small boat could have taken him from the north end of the lake into the bayou, or even someone could have snatched him up on foot. Searchers actually ran into several people lingering around the swamp. They wondered if maybe one of them could have kidnapped. August 26, the New Orleans Police Department was contacted. The New Orleans Police Department was 130 miles away. Percy Dunbar printed and posted 700 copies of his little boy. If someone knows or finds something, they would be able to recognize him and report it. Even a detective agency made postcards with Bobby's picture. These postcards were mailed to detectives in both East Texas and Florida. Bobby had light hair and blue eyes with fair skin and freckles. He was age four. He was short and stout. His left foot had a burn mark with a scar on his big toe. He was last seen wearing a blue romper and a straw hat. He was barefoot. In Bobby's hometown of Eleusis, they contributed to a $1,000 reward. 
They would receive the award if they got Bobby home alive to his parents. Bobby's full name is Robert Clarence Dunbar. This award amount is equivalent to $22,000 today. Eight months passed and still no signs of little Bobby. The investigators gave the money back to the town. A week later, a major lead was found. April 1913, a wire from Ladies of Hub saw a peddler slash tinker named William Cantwell Walters. Walters was spotted in a town named Hub in Mississippi. She said that he had a boy with a similar description that matched Bobby. However, his foot was covered in mud, so she could not tell if the little boy had a scar on his foot, which would have indicated that it was Bobby. When authorities interviewed Walters, he kept switching up his story of who the boy belonged to. The ladies witnessed Walter whipping the boy. To temporarily arrest Walters and get a better look at the boy, Authorities believed it was Bobby, but asked the parents for more pictures to be 100% sure it was Bobby. At first, the parents were not on board. However, they received photos of the little boy and headed to Mississippi for their son. The parents saw the boy had a scar on his foot like Bobby and a mole on his neck. Unfortunately, the boy did not respond to the parents when they called him by the name of Bobby. Leslie tried to hold him. The boy said no. She asked if she could see him the next day. She gave little boy a bath the next day and was 100% sure it was her son. The last thing she recalls saying, thank God, it's my boy. Then she fainted. Walters claimed to authorities the boy was not Bobby. The boy was Bruce Anderson. Walters claimed that the boy was his nephew. He belonged to his brother and a woman named Julia Anderson. Julia took care of Walters' elderly parents in Barnesville, North Carolina. She did actually work for his parents and was a single mom. Walters claims that Julia gave him the boy willingly. Julia does indeed confirm this story is true. However, she does claim that Walter changed some of the story. She states that Walters left with her son, Charles Bruce, in February of 1912. He says he wanted to take the child to go visit his sister. She says she has not seen the child since then. She did not consent for him to take her son for more than a few days. Kidnapping is a capital offense in Louisiana. Walter writes to the Dumberts explaining everything and talking about how they are making a huge mistake. That God will hold them accountable if they try to take the boy because the boy belongs to his brother's mistress. And if he doesn't return the boy to Julia Anderson, it would be very bad. Walter will be killed if the boy is really Bobby Dunbar. A newspaper brought Julie Anderson to Mississippi to identify the little boy. May 1st, 1913, she got to Opelousas, Louisiana. The town felt that the boy was really Bobby Dunbar and were not happy seeing Julia in town. The boy did not react well to Julia the same way he did with Lessie. The boy also received a pony and a new bike from his new home and accepted himself as Bobby. Julia Anderson had been missing her son for 15 months, which was longer than the Dunbars. She was pretty sure he was her son once she looked at him. The press spread nasty rumors about her. They did not like how she slept with three men and claimed she was indeed a prostitute. They called her out for losing all of her children within a year. They state that she gave her daughter up for adoption and she had a baby that died from SIDS. SIDS stands for Sudden Infant Death Syndrome and there wasn't a lot of awareness of this at the time. Then Bruce was also kidnapped. A newspaper wrote, quote unquote, she had not seen her son since February of 1912. She had forgotten him. Animals don't forget. But this big, coarse country woman, several times a mother, she forgot. The court ruled the son belonged to the Dunbars and not Anderson. Anderson had no lawyer or money to help her case. There was a two-week trial for Walters. He would be sentenced to life in prison. Boy would grow up to be Bobby Dunbar. And he married a girl named Marjorie.
They got married in 1935 and had a beautiful family with four children. He passed away in 1966. The story does not stop there. In 1999, his granddaughter Margaret Dunbar Cartwright was interested in her family's history. She had a scrapbook that contained 400 pictures of Bobby Dunbar when he went missing. What's super bizarre is she finds a cartoon with a picture of a grandfather and his grandson. The boy asks, Grandpa, do you think we will ever know for certain what our right name is? She digged further in and saw both Leslie and Percy said the boy's eyes were too small to be Bobby's. She looked at Julia's perspective and saw that Julia believed the Dunbars had kidnapped her son. Linda Tarver, the granddaughter of Julie Anderson, that says that growing up they knew they had an uncle that the Dunbars kidnapped. Cutright's father agreed to give a DNA sample to compare to one of the samples given by her great uncle. He was the son of Bobby's brother, Alonzo. Many urged against the Dunbars doing this, but Uncle Gerald felt like he would like to know regardless. Results showed the samples did not match. Dun, dun. Although this test proves that the boy was not indeed D Bobby Dunbar, there was not a test conducted to see if it matched with the Andersons. Many started to believe, even without DNA evidence, the boy was in fact Bruce Anderson. To this day, we do not know who the boy truly is. We also do not know what happened to the real Bobby Dunbar. How did Paul and Mizzy lose the real Bobby? Back in them times, this was like, what, 1912? Older kids or adults didn't really think to keep an eye on their kids as closely as we do nowadays. Just because back in the 1912 like, era, it was kind of more like a little bit of a chill era. They didn't really worry too much about kidnappings or anything like that. So they didn't really, nobody really paid attention to their kids that well. Another reason why Paul and Mizzy could have lost Bobby was that they separated and maybe Paul didn't notice it until the very last minute. Or he thought, of course, Bobby was behind him the whole time. Which, you know, it does happen. It happens to everybody, especially with kids, because they tend to run off. Yeah, I think one of the reasons how Paul Missy lost Bobby was, for one, like we mentioned, little kids, they get curious and they want to explore, and so they're gonna go and run off. And all it takes is five seconds. They could even get hit by a car and you weren't paying attention. It's very easy to lose children. Earlier also that day, I want to know that Bobby really did want to go with his dad to work. And so maybe while Paul wasn't looking, Bobby ran off to go look for his dad and unfortunately somebody snatched him up because he's very little. So that could have been one of the reasons why Paul ended up losing Bobby. They were also in kind of a wooded area, swampy area. Bobby could have been thinking of, oh, okay, I want to play hide and seek with my, with the family friend or whatever. And so he could have ran off um, thinking that he's being goofy and somebody snatched him up. Bobby wanted to play hide and seek. There's multiple different reasons. And like you did mention how back in the day, kidnappings didn't happen as often as this. They still happen, but you could pretty much go anywhere with your kids and expect them to be okay because the era they grew up in is that um, it's safe, nothing's going to happen to my kid, it's all going to be okay. And that is wrong mentality, but that's just how it was. Next question is what happened to the real Bobby? There's a few different theories that I have, but they all involve cannot be. One of them obviously could have been like before there was a theory how somebody could have had a small boat and they took him out to the bayou and they snatched Bobby up. Another theory is that when people were searching for Bobby there was a lot of stragglers nearby so one of them easily could have kidnapped Bobby and done horrible things. There were so many of these shady people out there. Paul wasn't paying attention to Bobby, so they could have easily gotten to him. Bobby also could have walked to 
go find his father at work because he wanted to go with his dad and his dad told him he couldn't and he was determined to go see his dad because he was a daddy's boy and on the way unfortunately someone could have found him and snatched him up right there yeah i feel like bobby was either kidnapped or there's something obviously missing in this story as to what really happened to him and i wonder if Paul Mizzy and someone else had something to do with it as far as his disappearance. Whether or not he was still alive up until a certain point, we don't know that, but what if all those years they were searching for Bobby and they thought they found him, but in reality he wasn't even alive. Yeah, and also Paul Mizzy was a little bit shady because before Bobby went missing and while Paul could have been joking. Who's to say he wasn't serious? So when they're when they're heading back to lunch, Paul has Alonso on his shoulder. And Paul is joking around with Bobby and he says, Get out of the way, heavy, or I'll run you over. And then Bobby is goofing around. He's like, You can't do it. You ain't no bigger than me. That could have implied that Paul did hurt Bobby. It is a little bit weird that that was their last conversation. Also, what is super weird as well is when Paul and Leslie are going together to search for her son Bobby. At one point, she ended up fainting on the ground. And we're not exactly sure why she fainted. Paul could have wanted to make sure she thought, okay, we looked for her son. Paul could have given something to Leslie which made her faint and forget during that moment he could have done something to hide the body or whatever. Paul could have actually killed Bobby. Who kidnapped him and where is the real Bobby Dunbar if he was kidnapped? Well, going back to the little bit of theories we've talked about already. Could have been somebody who had a very small bulk that kidnapped him. Could have even been Paul Mizzy, especially because he was very suspicious. It also could have been another third party that we don't know about, whether it was a stranger in the woods, somebody else that he knew potentially. As far as where he is, I feel like he's probably very far, far away from where he grew up and where he was at at the time of his disappearance. He was probably possibly even taken to a completely different other state, like somewhere further away, like California or even New York. We really don't know, especially because we don't know for sure if he was actually kidnapped. Obviously, this does seem more like a kidnapping or a killing. And we've mentioned several theories, like Paul Mizzy, the strangler, someone with the boat taking him, or him walking off to see his father to take him. But I also want to mention that sex trafficking is very common in America. There is some very effed up people out there. And it was not as well known during this time. So someone could have had like a super sick mind and they came across this little boy and they took him and did horrible things to him. And we might not have been able to find him because they took him across state lines. And back then, the lack of technology made it really hard to track criminals. And there was definitely, like, not a lot of awareness for stuff such as sex trafficking or kidnapping. You really supposedly didn't have to worry about it with that kind of mentality it's just waiting for something to happen so he could be across state lines probably dead he could still be not very far from where he was at like when the stranglers got him and who i don't know where they would have put his body they found footprints of tiny leading towards the railroad tracks that are away from the swamp so that kind of makes it seem like somebody actually took him away from the swamp and kidnapped him and he's probably he's probably not alive he could have very easily lived a full entire life at this point and we we don't know you know he could have lived a happy life under a different identity with some stranger that took him he could have got married and had kids and Away peacefully. The boy did not respond well to both Leslie and Julie Anderson. It was later on confirmed 
to not be Bobby Dunbar. Although it was never denied or confirmed if it was Bruce Anderson, did this boy belong to Julie Anderson? So now we're talking about the boy that was actually found, which you later on find out in the DNA test that there's no way it could be Bobby Denver. But Julie Anderson has been missing her son for a while and she believed that that little boy was hers. So it is possible that this little boy did belong to Julia Anderson. We don't have a DNA test yet and the fact that the boy was not Bobby Dunbar makes it seem like there is a chance that it could be her son. It also could not even be her son at all unless we had a DNA test from some of the family, we would not be able to tell whether or not the boy was an Anderson. And unfortunately, the, because the way the media treated Julia Anderson, they didn't take her very serious. And so there wasn't a chance at all that they could do further testing or try to figure out if this boy belonged to her because they basically thought that she was a slut and she was irresponsible and that she didn't give a crap about her kids because unfortunately she lost the kid to SIDS and unfortunately she also had to give up a kid for adoption and because that the media portrayed her as this in this negative light which sucks because this could be her son and that sucks that somebody else had her son and she could have had the opportunity to get her son back but she didn't get that chance also it could not even be her son as well because there is no dna test to confirm or deny if this boy was indeed an anderson yeah, I feel like you can't really go off of appearance or personality or voice or anything like that alone off of this. As far as if he was an Anderson, you would have to go more based off of DNA because Bobby and Bruce look very similar. If that tells you anything, it just goes to prove that DNA is like a really solid thing that could pop a lot of things. And in this case, it would have helped to confirm or deny whether he was Bruce Anderson or not. He could have just been a completely random boy that Walter's just kidnapped. He could have been neither of their sons. He could have easily belonged to another family as well. Yeah, and there's so many little boys out there with fair skin and light hair and blue eyes. That's just the description of him is broad. The only thing that was specific was like the mole on his neck and the scar, but even then kids get bruises all the time so it's hard to distinguish based off of just looks dna doesn't lie that's the best way to go about it is to use dna tests if the boy did not belong to julia anderson who else could this boy belong to like i stated before he could belong to anyone he could belong to another family he could be a child that was unfortunately sex trafficked he could have been an orphan he could have been anybody he could have belonged to anybody walters could have kidnapped any kid because there are adults out there who are very very creepy and do that unfortunately but we don't really have any other options as to who this boy could have belonged to because they didn't really explore that very very much all right so the next question to clarify that, why did walter anderson take julia's son and beat him so julia actually did have a son that walter did actually take now we can't confirm if the boy that was found is which julia's or not but she still had a son that walter did take why did he take her son and be him. He probably is messed up in the head. I think it's really messed up if you're any person that is willing to be a kid is fucked up in the head. Part of the reason why he might have taken her son was because he knew about her host situation and wanted to kind of like take advantage of her. He knew that she was a single mom and that she was taking care of Walter's parents. The fact that she had lost a couple other kids and he was just really messed up in the head and just wanted to make her feel even more miserable. Maybe he didn't like her at all and thought instead of firing her from taking care of his parents, he thought 
why don't I take advantage and say, oh, I'm just going to take your son for a few days to go see my sister's house. And I'll bring him back. And then he never brings her son back. He just clearly wanted to take advantage of her. Or maybe his brother ha had an argument with Julia. They weren't getting along. Maybe his brother asked Walter to get rid of her son because he didn't want to be involved with her anymore. I think it's very possible. Um, I know in some, there's, you know, like situations, like, unfortunately, there have been instances where father and still have other people kidnap their son or pay them money to do it or kind of outsource to get rid of their child in order to not have to deal with their their baby mama and his wife whoever anymore can't rule out that possibility i still think it's very fucked up the boy accept the name bobby because the parents bought him a pony a bike and because life was great the boy at first did not like lucy and she was very unsure however over time the boy got used to her and accepted the dunbars as parents even though the dna test as otherwise. Kids can be very easily forced into believing that there's somebody or believing that the story went this way or that way just because kids are more likely to more vulnerable to being forced or are more likely to believe things that you tell them unfortunately because they have a lot of trust in adults sometimes, more than they should, of course. So it's very possible he accepted the name because he was forced with a pony and a bike, and because he saw this life and how great it was. And although he didn't like Bessie at first, he kind of grew to, into thinking he was Bobby and that this person was his mom because maybe he was yearning for somebody to be his mom, or he was yearning to have a great life because he had had, had the greatest life that brought up until that point so it's very very possible he just accepted the name and everything just because somebody told him to something that a lot of people need to know kids are highly motivated by toys candy all that that's why you hear so many kidnappings involving candy and toys because they're like oh here's this new pony and a bike this is so much fun or Lessie and the Dumbers in general they have been missing their boy for a while so even though this obviously wasn't Bobby their son they were striving to have their son back and they wanted to give this boy a great life and give him a ton of love and shower him with attention and so this little boy probably accepted the name because finally somebody had showed him what love was he probably did not know what love was considering the fact that walter had beaten this little boy and so this little boy was probably happy to go with these other complete strangers because they were going to take care of him and give him a good life the little boy was probably skeptical at first because he was dealing with walter beating him and he probably didn't want to get beat by somebody else but once he saw that lessie and Percy Dunbar were going to get him a pony and a bike and a fire truck with a bed of flowers. He finally knew what love was and he decided to accept them as parents because they kind of were raising him as their own. And for once, he was able to be a kid and not worry about when his next meal is or when is he gonna get beaten next? For once, he felt love. Who do we think the boy is? So clearly we know that the boy is not Bobby Dunbar. So there's a couple of possibilities. This could be, like we mentioned before, Julia Anderson's son. Unfortunately, with the media and their whole biasness, and the lack of a DNA test to see. If this boy could have been Bruce Anderson, we won't ever know if that was her kid, but it could very well be her kid. Also, it could very well be not her kid. It could be some other random boy that Walter saw on the street, and yes, he did kidnap Julia's kid, and maybe her kid he already killed, and then he found this new victim. Who knows, maybe a friend's kid, or just even on the streets, and he was gonna kidnap this person and beat them 
the boy could honestly belong to anyone. Since there was no DNA test, we will never know who the boy truly is. What do we believe happened to the real Bobby Dittmar? I believe that he was kidnapped by somebody, whether it's somebody he knew or told a random stranger, or he was killed off by somebody he knew or was a total stranger. Um, either way, I don't believe, obviously, Bobby is not alive today. Today, this happened back in 1912, but the real question is whether or not he's alive a couple months or even a day or even in that moment when they realized he was missing, whether or not he was actually alive. Yeah, I think that's a big question. I think that definitely the investigators should have looked more into Paul Mizzy's because he seems a little bit shady. It still is very odd to me that that last statement about him joking about running Bobby over, that just is very unsettling the way he says that. Definitely think he needed to be more looked into because he could have potentially killed Bobby Dunbar. Or like we said, there is multiple different scenarios of how Bobby Dunbar could have been kidnapped and if he was kidnapped he probably didn't live very long and terrible things were probably done to him and that's just how unfortunate it is but that will always be the biggest question that remains what really happened to Bobby Dunbar and who do we think that other boy is that and parents, this is why you always need to keep track of your little ones. You can't just turn away for five seconds. You have to always make sure you know where your kids are at, at all times because they can get snatched just like that. Thank you for listening to Murders, Mysteries, and More. Remember to always keep your eyes open because you never know when someone's watching.